So another characteristic we want to look at when we're discussing uh, the graphs of our functions are the relative max and min. So the relative maxima or minima. And that is by definition really just the point at which the function changes its direction. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at in this graph that we have right here. So I have a curve. I have a curve going on in my function right here. You can see that at the ends, my function is going to go off in the um, to infinity in both uh, positive and negative directions. We have something here though. We come down, we change directions, we go up, we change directions, we go down, we change directions, we go up. Every time I change directions from increasing to decreasing, I have some sort of max or min. Now I have down here defined for you, uh, for my maximum point, this is what we would call a local max. Okay, we would always just, just call it a max, but it is a local max, and I'm gonna explain that why in just a second, but it's a maximum, because uh, I have a maximum area right there, or a maximum height, I mean to say, right there in that segment. Notice here I have a minimum value along this curve and a minimum value over here along this curve. Both of these points are minimum values. This point over here, however, is labeled as a local min, and this one over here would be an absolute min. Now most of the time, we don't really care the difference between the local and the absolute. Um, in our calculators, when we find the max and the min, we're not really determining, it. there's nothing in there that talks about local versus absolute. But what it basically is saying is, this is a minimum, but this over here is the absolute minimum of the function. Okay, and you can kind of see that because this minimum value is occurring at uh, three zero, right? So it's the lowest, absolute lowest point of the function. Whereas this is a low point, it's not the lowest point of the function. It's low over here on this segment of the curve, but this over here would be the lowest. Now you can also come back and look at the max. This is a maximum point on this segment of the curve that I am kind of scrolling over. But it's not the maximum of the function because my function goes off in both directions in a maximum area, okay? So that's how come this is a local max, whereas these are just, these are local and absolute mins. So we want to just be able to write down using this function, I want to be able to determine what the maximum value is, and we write it as the ordered pair. This is the point at which my function has a max, and we just write that as, uh oh, the point one, two, one comma two. Now over here I have two minimums, and the first one being negative uh, one one. The second one being oops, not that. The second one being over three up zero. So that's the ordered pair for that one. Good. Now let's go back and review what we were learning before about increasing versus decreasing. I want to determine based on the graph here where is the function increasing and where is the function decreasing. So remember, when we talk about that, I'm really determining, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm basing that on, on where the y values are increasing versus decreasing. So if I follow this section of the function along, or this section of the function down to the, to the minimum value here, you can see that it's gonna get lower and lower and lower for my possible y values. So from here to here, my y values are decreasing. Don't let that arrow throw you off. I'm actually, y values are decreasing all the way to that point right there. They are also decreasing from this set, uh, in this segment right here, draw that line. This function is decreasing from that maximum to the minimum min right here. Now where is the function increasing? The function is actually increasing from this minimum value up to the max. So in this section, we are increasing. And then again, we are gonna go off to infinity, uh, increasing from this point of the graph, moving on. So how do I write that again in interval notation? Uh, if we wanted to just talk about increasing, because that's what comes next here, that was my blue highlighted areas, we are inc 
decreasing uh, between the values negative 1 and 1. So we are increasing from negative 1 to 1, and we are increasing again from 3 to infinity. Okay, So we determine increasing and decreasing based on the y value, but we write it in terms of x. Now where is the function decreasing? We're decreasing here in the yellows, so from negative infinity all the way up to a, oops, all the way up to a negative 1, and then again from 1 to 3. That's the next section. We are decreasing from 1 to 3. And then just as a reminder to kind of keep our skills up here, let's determine, I'm going to get rid of some of these highlights, what is the domain and range of this function? So if I wanted to talk about domain and range, remember domain are the possible x values. So I can have all x values, right? All x values along this function are allowed. So the domain of this function will be from negative to positive infinity. The range are the possible y values. So what's the smallest y value that I'm ever going to get? That's going to occur here at 0, right? Because I can come down and actually touch the um, down here at 3, 0. So the minimum value, the smallest value I'm ever going to get for y is going to be 0, and then that's going to move off into infinity because I'm allowed all numbers, all values for y from 0 to infinity. So that's a good look at understanding increasing versus decreasing, domains and range, and maximum and minimum on a function.